hoping that this summer you get to go on vacation, whether it's a long one or just a long weekend. I am hoping that you can get away and really relax and have some, some family time or some time to yourself. Either way, the garden needs to be tended before you go. It needs to be prepped for your departure so it doesn't have separation anxiety from you, or at least you can minimize the separation anxiety. So here are some things that I do before I leave, knowing also that when I get back, it's still gonna look pretty rough and that's okay. That's the price we pay for getting to, uh, getting to go on a vacation, getting to get away for a little while. So number one, I know where the dead pockets are in my garden. Even though I have an automatic sprinkling system, I know that there are certain areas that the sprinkler doesn't really get and doesn't get reliably. So what I do before I leave is those areas, I turn on one of these small conical kind of um, comes out in a, not a real large diameter. I talked about this little tiny sprinkler. It's about three or four dollars, maybe more than that now. It's metal. I talked about it on a previous video. We'll put the link above. Um, but this is just wonderful to get those tiny little pockets because if you don't turn the pressure up really high, you can deep water just a very targeted area, a very targeted zone in your garden. And I just did it in this small area right here. So those uh, areas that are dead zones that don't get adequate moisture from the in-ground watering system, then I target those areas with my little tiny sprinkler. So that's what I do first is I really target those zones. I think yesterday I did four of them. So deep water those areas so that they can handle your being away for that period of time. It's sometimes better to deep water for a long period of time than do that kind of shallow watering. So that is my tip number one. Look for your dead zone and take care of them before you leave. So speaking of watering, it's the thing that I think we stress about most before we leave town because we need to make sure that everything gets adequate moisture, but we know our gardens better than anybody else. So here's a couple of tips in that regard. Number one, whoever is going to water for you, whether it's Stuart or a neighbor kid, or I always have somebody stay in my house while I'm gone. Usually they water for me. But what I do with them is I take a watering tour where one morning they actually go around with me and see what all I water and more importantly, how long I water it. Because some things, again, we'll talk about shallow watering. When you just give things a spritz on the surface surface of the foliage, that's not penetrating the root system. All that's doing is probably creating a vector for mold, for uh, powdery mildew, for things like that to develop on the foliage. We don't want that to happen. So I show them exactly how I water at the base, how long for certain pots I keep the water on them until it runs out the bottom. Any other kind of tips like that that you want to share with them. Have them actually go around with you while you're doing it, not just show them what needs to be watered and when. The other thing that I do is if there is something in the garden bed that I really want to get additional uh, moisture, like this boxwood that I transplanted recently and I want to make sure that they don't miss it, I'll get some of these utility flags and I'll put these in place. So as they're watering the containers and such, they don't forget to water these in-ground things that I may have just transplanted. So that's another tip. Another friend of mine had a really great idea. Her garden isn't real large, but she actually had her husband video her walking around her garden and watering, and then she could just share that with her helper who's gonna do the watering for her while she's gone, so they know exactly what to do and what needs water and what doesn't. So there's a couple of additional helpful watering tips for you. Now let's move on to number three. 
So number three, depending on what type of gardening you do, whether lots of vegetable gardening or ornamental gardening, no matter what, you want to clip and cut and cut back based on what you're growing. So if you grow lots of vegetables and you're not gonna be able to enjoy them while you're gone, then by all means, harvest them now, make something with them and consume them now, or let whoever is watering, watering for you take some of it home with them. I've got all sorts of cherry tomatoes that may mature here while I'm gone, and so my helper, they can take as many of them as they want or those that are starting to get ripe but aren't quite ripe, I know I can encourage them to ripen off of the vine so I can take these in, put these in a brown paper bag and they will mature and ripen while I'm gone. Another thing that I'm gonna do is really be attentive to what's going on. So as is typically the case this time of year, this is starting to get some spider mite. So I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna cut some of these suckers out and really whatever foliage looks kind of infected. And then obviously I'm gonna treat it with some insecticidal soap. It will recover in all of this heat. It doesn't need all of this additional foliage. And so I can in some ways help prevent the spread of spider mite by some judicious clipping. So that's what I'm gonna do here in my tomatoes. And if I had squash, if I had other kinds of vegetables, I would probably take preemptive steps based on my being gone and based on what I was growing. So make sure that none of that produce that you've worked so hard to grow goes to waste while you're gone. Well, something else that I like to do before I leave town is cut back my annuals hard. Now I'm using the same scissors that I used on my tomatoes, so I am making sure I don't spread that spider mite around and I'm wiping them down with a disinfecting wipe. So I've got some wave petunias here that actually don't look bad. I've also got some scaviola, but I know that it's time to prune them back pretty hard by as much as half. And that way, while I am gone, they can start to recover and I don't have to be here when they look a little bit brutalized. They will recover while I'm gone. So I am going to be pretty aggressive in cutting these back. And then it will flush out with new growth. And shortly after I return, I will give it a good feed and these will be happy and much fuller again. I'm doing it not only with these wave petunias, but I'm also doing it with this gold money wart and anything else that's in here that is looking a little bit lanky. Now, there are two different thoughts on feeding before you go. I think it may depend on how long you're gonna be gone. Uh, there's an argument to be made for not feeding until you get back, especially if it's really, really hot and it's gonna be difficult for your plants to survive, much less pump out new flowers and new foliage. But if you think you can safely fertilize while you're gone and have the plant recover that much more dramatically while you're gone, then you might give it a feed. So this is one of those situations where know thy own circumstances, look at your weather forecast and see what you need to do. But these also, when I planted them, had a slow release long-term fertilizer in them. So I think it will probably keep them going and keep them pretty happy while I'm gone. If you want to leave them on and not cut them back so the pollinators can have their way with them, well, that would be a consideration as well. But I like to cut things back right before I leave so they can start the recovery and regrowth process while I'm gone. Now let's move on to the next tip. Well, along with cutting back any trailing annuals like those that I just cut back. I'm also going to make sure that I really, really deadhead before I'm gone. I might go ahead and clip off the ones that are even fresh 
that I know will expire in my absence. That way it will tell the plant to really start pumping out a new flush of flowers, which will then hopefully appear just as I return. So I can definitely do that with these zinnias because I want them to be in flower and give me a nice flowery greeting when I return. Something else I did, I had a hanging basket hanging right there on that hook and I took it down because hanging baskets will dry out much more quickly, especially if it's not only hot, but it's windy. And recently we've had some wind in addition to the heat. So I removed it from its hook and I placed it in a large pot here that actually had some soil in it and it will then prevent transpiration and desiccation of this, uh, of this hanging basket and it won't dry out in between watering. So this basket, sometimes I have to water it twice a day. This way, by putting it in this pot, it will hold the water for longer, and I know my waterer will only have to water it when she's here in the morning. So that's another little 4.5 tip deadhead what things you've got in bloom right now and then take down any hanging baskets and put them in an area where they won't dry out so quickly. Now one thing I did this weekend was really try to give all of my myrtle topiaries a trim because if I'm going to be gone, I really want these to flush out in my absence. Now this may be one of those kind of things, um, one of those pieces of advice that you kind of roll your eyes and say, really, it's all I can do just to get my act together, to get my kids ready, to get my husband ready, to get my wife ready to leave for town, much less wrapping things up at work. I don't have time to clip my topiaries or to mulch my beds or things like that, that ideally you would do before you leave. So you just do what you can do. And one thing I can do, which is especially important for those of us that have lots of container plantings and especially lots of small container plantings, and that's aggregate your pots. So I've got all of these myrtle topiary out here because they, they are out here temporarily during this time of year when they get really full sun and they really are flushing out and filling out so they'll look great this fall and this winter. And I wanna keep them in the sun because I do have a reliable waterer, but what I've done is put them all in the same area. So she doesn't have to find them and locate them all over my landscape to make sure that each one is adequately watered. So these are pretty much congregated right here. Some of these I'll even pull out so that she knows that they all get watered. They all get watered the same amount. They're all in the same area and that makes watering for her a lot more efficient. And lastly, I'm always encouraging all of us to remember to turn our pots 360 so that the plants inside them get adequate sunlight on all sides. This one is a perfect example. It got some damage in the ice storm. So I've got the pretty side facing to the front, which is typically what we do. But if I'm leaving town or going on vacation, I will put the ugly side to the front so that it will get lots of light in my absence. And I can do that with all of my pots. That way they get this type of, of real late summer sunlight oomph and they can put out new growth on the side that is a little bit unhappy. So if I want the ugly side to face forward, I'm gonna do it while I'm gone. So my thematic is do your uglies in your absence. And those are my tips for garden prep before you go on vacation. 
And here's my fashion epilogue for today. My dress is Universal Thread from Target. Uh, I think it's about five years old, but it's great to work out in the yard in because it's cool, good airflow, good air circulation, and it just looks kind of nice, I think. And it's very, very comfortable to work in. You can really move around in it very easily. Uh, my earrings are old hoops. I think these also may have come from Target years ago. I'm not really sure, but I just like hoops in general. And lastly, my shoes. Now, Stuart and I were just talking about this. This is the one fashion statement of this year that's definitely very trendy, and that's white tennis shoes, specifically Vans. In fact, Stuart just told me that he bought some white Vans this weekend. So these I bought off of Amazon. I will put a link below. They're great because they go with just about everything, and you'll see in magazines and stuff that people style them both with dresses, with shorts, um, with ankle length pants, with all sorts of different types of outfits. Um, one thing I would tell you to be mindful of is that if the my only complaint about these is that the rise this whatever this section of the shoe is called it's a little bit too high for me and then when I walk it comes and it kind of abuts up against my ankle bones and so preferably I would have bought a pair that was a little bit had a little bit more of a low rise than these but other than that they're very very comfortable and I like them and I'll put a link below so there you go your fashion epilogue for today